Hello folks, Tiso here. This video will just give you some general hints on how to deal with the 4 fights in the energy amplifier event if you are still having trouble getting maximum points. To get enough fruit data to buy everything from the shop, you'll need to get 20,000 points. You only need about 6,000 points that I discussed earlier to get all the important items like the primo gems, crown, and golden books. However, it is worth it if you can get 20,000 points to clear out the shop because you can get 1 million mora from the event. That's right, 1 million mora. At the beginning, this event was quite difficult, but after you have collected all the crystals and buffs, the fights become a lot more manageable. First, I'll talk about some of the more useful crystals that I've noticed. If your main DPS is someone that uses charge attacks to do a lot of damage like Wu Tao or Ganyu, then you should definitely choose the Hunter's Romp crystal. It increases your charge attack damage by quite a lot. To synergize more with charge attacks, I always pick Whirlpool since it has a nice vacuum effect and does extra damage. Execution is another one that helps out charge attacks, but I noticed it doesn't do crazy amount of damage for how infrequent it happens. One of my favorite buffs is the Timely Rain. This pretty much summons a little rainstorm when your elemental burst hits an enemy. This is the best buff period if you have Ganyu. This pretty much allows her burst to permafreeze enemies on her own. If your main DPS has a burst that acts as an install, such as Razor, Yanfei, or Deluc, then here are some of the blue and green crystals that will help them out. Oh, install is pretty much another term for a character using their super to transform or entering a buff state. Anyways, Embolden is one of the best ones for install characters. It will increase your normal attack damage for 20 seconds. Grabbing Song of Steel also buffs your normal damage for quite a while. Keen Edge is nice if you are a physical DPS, and Challenger is a nice general buff for half the stages or if you are playing a ranged character. I did try out a plunging attack build with my Xiao, so I got Falcon Stance and then all the other plunging buffs, but I found out it's not that good at all. The crystals that help out plunging attacks only increases by a small amount, and that increased damage is consumed after a single use. It seems the game still doesn't have any good artifacts or abilities to help out plunging attacks too much. I also want to talk about Blade Dance. This crystal increases your attack speed and normal attack damage by quite a bit. You automatically start the fight with 5 stacks. However, getting hit once will make you lose a stack, and it takes 10 seconds to regain a stack. It's also quite hard to not take damage during the entire fight. You can use a shield to prevent damage, but there's another core crystal that helps out teams that utilize Geo Shields. That's the Star Crystal Dance right here. It does a nice chunk of damage when you gain a shield, and it also increases your Geo damage. There are also some minor crystals that help out shields. Courageous is a nice one that increases your normal attack as you are shielded. Refraction Crystals and Focus Crystals also help out a Geo team. One of them increases your bonus elemental damage, and the other gives you more energy particles back for your burst. There's also the green one that increases shield strength by 35%. If you happen to use a team that does not synergize well with any of these specific buffs, then here is a more generalized crystal combination that can help out any team. For the core crystal, pick Dual Stance. It doesn't require you to use charge attacks or specific elements to gain all of its benefits. And here are some of the minor crystals that help out any team. Refined Burst just increases your elemental burst by one level, which helps out everyone. Charge Up lets you get more energy when using elemental skills so you can burst more often. Judgment helps out in the fights that have a lot of smaller, weaker enemies, but not so much for the single stronger ones. And Challenger kind of fits the same bill. When there are two or less enemies around you, you gain an attack and defense buff. Burst damage, overcharged, and overmastered is also general buffs. It increases your burst damage, your energy recharge, and your elemental mastery, respectively. Now let's get into tips for each fight. Once you've been in the fight, make sure to click that Primo Gem icon on the top right to collect your 60 Primo Gems for each stage. You will also need an average of 5,000 points on each stage to clear out the shop. The first stage has 6 Geo Bishops that come in waves of 2 at a time. The Challenger Crystal that I mentioned earlier will be 100% effective in this fight. In order to get 5,000 points, you need to actually play on Expert. Maxing out everything on hard will not net you enough to clear out the shop. The gimmick here is when one of the Geo Bishops die, they leave behind a little crystal that explodes. As long as you kill the enemies kinda close together and you move away from that spot, you don't really need to worry about that explosive crystal. For all these fights, you can actually use revival items, heal up, and use food buffs. So definitely eat up if you are having trouble clearing the stage. 
For the fight itself, there's not too much to talk about. Focus on the little Geovis ships with the buffs first, since the little earth waves are kinda annoying. As I mentioned earlier, if you have Ganyu, then get that timely rain crystal, and you can pretty much perma-freeze enemies on your own. And the last thing to note are the little clear diamonds that the enemies drop when they die. These are the explosive crystals that you don't want to touch. No touching. In my opinion, the second stage is the most annoying. It's not difficult, but annoying. You'll be fighting inside a small ring. If you leave that ring, you'll take damage. One of the modifiers I recommend removing is this one near the end. When you get hit by a lightning bolt after exiting the field, you don't want to lose 15 energy. Besides that, all the other modifiers don't really affect you too much. Once again, eat up if you need to. You can have one offensive, one defensive, and one utility food buff on at the same time. So this fight has three waves of enemies. The first wave have two archers outside the ring. There are two ways to deal with them. One is to use your own archer to snipe them down. The other is to just rush out of the ring and kill them with melee attacks and then come back in afterwards. Use the method that better fits your team. The second wave will have two archers and one shaman on the outside. I like to focus them first since they keep shooting arrows which is quite annoying. And the third wave will have two gunner Fatui's far away and one electro hammer guy. If you cannot defeat the two gunners before their shield comes up, then either bring a hydro character or use the timely rain buff. After I finish bum rushing the gunners, I go back into the safety ring and finish off the last enemy. The third fight with the mechanical enemies is probably the easiest one. There are two gimmicks here. The first one is the enemies will heal up about 50% of their health if you don't kill them fast enough after they drop below 15%. The other gimmick is a huge white orb that spawns and tracks towards you. It will do damage when it eventually touches you, but you can just use your elemental burst to ignore the damage. If you don't move after starting the fight, both of the ruined guards will walk towards you instead of using projectile attacks. Once they are grouped up, just use any AoEs you have to bring them down. Once one of them drops to low health, focus that down. They'll have a green aura around them to know when their healing timer starts. If you don't kill them within 6 seconds, they'll heal back 50% of the health, so focus it down to save time. And here is one of the energy orbs that tracks you down. It will damage both you and the enemies, but it doesn't do that much damage to the enemies anyway. When you're about to touch it, use your elemental burst to ignore the damage. And that's pretty much it for this stage. You should have seen these enemies many many times before, so you should know how to deal with them by now. For the last stage, you will be fighting a single Abyss Herald. The gimmick for this one is the other enemies that spawn. The Attendants will heal up the Abyss Herald so you want to AoE them down as soon as possible. The only modifier I don't like is the Hydro Shockwave that comes out every 15 seconds. You can also decrease the amount that the Attendants heal if you are having trouble damaging the Herald. Once the Herald changes to Phase 2, the Attendants will stop spawning. The first wave of Attendants will spawn right behind them on the north side of the arena. Once I start the fight, I slowly head towards there so I can get my AoEs ready to bring them down. Once you bring the Abyss Herald to phase 2, there will be no more attendants, but if you wait too long, he'll summon another wave of attendants over and over again. The second wave will spawn on the southwest side of the arena, the third wave will spawn on the southeast, and then the fourth will spawn back north again. And this pattern will just keep repeating until you get to phase 2. Once he reaches phase 2, just keep doing elemental damage to destroy the shield. Cryo damage is the best since it does the most damage and it freezes the heroes for quite a while. Anyways, that's pretty much the general tips for the 4 fights on this event. 
It's not that bad once you have a large selection of buff crystals to choose from. If you are still having trouble taking the hero down, check out my best hero guide by clicking the top right icon. As always, thanks for watching. Try to get that 20,000 points in order to claim a million more from the shop. And as always, have fun out there, traveler. Oh, and quick shout out to the Love Handle Phone Grips. My affiliate link is in the description below.